What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we want to ask a very important question for the kayak industry. Should paddle kayaks even exist? No. Yes, of course. Yes, that's extremely inflammatory. It's insane. We understand that. But yeah. there's, I feel like the place and the position of what a paddle kayak is expected to do and how mm -hmm. it should perform and why maybe like the value proposition of a paddle kayak has changed in the last three to five years. Yeah. It, 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 both, like there were, pad when pedals came out, everyone was like, the paddles are dead. We're never going back. Isn't that like what every industry does? They're 100%. like the death of this yes. industry, like the yes. previous iteration. And I know my old school guys, they're gonna be down in the comments right now going like, well, the first canoes were obviously paddle. We hollow out trees. Mm -hmm. like, sure did, did you? Did you hollow out the tree? Uh, <laughs> well, some, I, some people have. I don't and know. I, and I think like that's what the industry kind of yeah. thought when they when the when pedals first came out. It was like we don't even need paddle kayaks anymore. Evolution. And then people were like, yeah. well, wait a minute. What are the benefits of a paddle kayak? And then all of a sudden, there's like companies that are only making paddle kayaks that are having a lot of success. Crescent. And we need to talk about sort of again mm -hmm. now that pedal kayaks are getting inexpensive enough to compete with a paddle kayak in some yep. instances, and paddle kayaks have now redesigned themselves to actually have a new value proposition. We wanna talk about what is that new value proposition yep. and where does this sort of stand in the hierarchy? And then if you're going to buy your first kayak, how should you be thinking about paddle versus pedal versus motor? Yeah, because there's a third category now, gosh dang it. As and that is made paddle paddles and paddles are both dead. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> Every, everything's dead. Yeah, everything's just dead. Constantly just knocking it's, down. Now it's just bass boats. So I think first of all, let's bass let's, boat for one. Let's talk about what has changed with paddle kayaks and where they kind of live. Mm -hmm. So I think if five years ago when when pedals first came out, uh, they were more expensive. And so if in the, the the general advice was get pedals if you can afford them and get away from your paddles yeah. no matter what. Um, and also it was kind of dependent on the terrain that you're fishing, right? Mm -hmm. So part of the, the proposition with uh, the pedals is, you know, you got a little more torque, a little more power. Uh, you can Longevity. Go, you can go a little faster. It's a little easier further. to go. Yeah, well, not necessarily faster because we've, we've put yeah. them head to head. Yeah. But you can go further on less energy, right? 100%. It's less energy to go that distance. Mm -hmm. Part of the issue or the drawback is, let's say I'm fishing a really weed heavy lake, I'm screwed. Paddle guy's happy, pedal guy, sad. So it kind of depends on where you fish too. Then the flip side of that, mm -hmm. uh, if it's windy out, paddle guy is having a miserable day, regardless yep. of what kind of anchor setup you have. And, and pedal, pedal guy is just much good. happier, <laughs> yeah. happier. Still yeah. not thrilled. Now, essentially the kayak industry is divided like this. We have our, look at, I'm making a graph on this video right now. We have our paddle kayaks, mm -hmm. where it's just like, I'm purely arm control here, people. And when the wind blows, I spin like a top. Then we got our pedal kayaks which are divided into technically like two different categories, but you have your prop drives and you have your fin drives, which both operate differently. Mm -hmm. And you've got your, with the props, forward and then instant reverse, whereas the uh, fin drives either don't have a reverse and you're purely on rudder control, or they're like the Hobie 180 or 360, where you have a little more turning control. If it's a 360, it just breaks all the time. Then we get into our motorized kayaks. So you look at like the MK series from Old Town, where it's like now in that, where the pedal drive would be, I've got a prop style motor. Trolling motor. Essentially a trolling motor. With spot lock. And they may have spot lock. So you've got your, like your MK yeah. level, then you go up to your spot lock level with that. So they're not going super fast. You can get up to that four, four and a half, maybe five miles an hour, depending on. A moderate to fast pedal, like a seven out of 10, eight out of 10 pedal. It's, it's a top out pedal speed, yeah. but you're not pedaling. So now it's zero energy expended mm -hmm. and you're just like posting, posting to Instagram while you go spot to spot. It's kind of dope. <laughs> and then, then you go above that spot lock and now you've got speed, maybe not and necessarily power. the ability to spot lock unless you like mod out uh, the XI3, for mm -hmm. example, at, at a higher thrust you can get the speed and you can uh, yeah. mod it so you have it spot lockable, or you go with the rear mount, now you got like your Torquedo, like torquedo. your Newport, yeah. uh, all these other big speed. speed, whatever it is. Yeah, so there's all these, this is our range now. The there's striation is much bigger. So which you, many options. Which you would think would totally kill Pat, what, pat, pat, paddle way paddles. down here. Like, why does this still exist? No, we were thinking about this. Here's lately. the thing. So we went out yeah. and bought the Crescent. We called them out. They're making. Mm -hmm. They only make paddle models now. Here, here. I'm gonna do. We're gonna do a quick pros and cons list and how they've changed and sort of where they play mm -hmm. on paddles. So paddles, they're so light. Oh my, yeah. like under Throw 80 pounds go, for a 13, yeah. well, 12 and a half foot kayak is insanely light. Yeah. So they don't weigh very much. 
they are shockingly fast. Like, and I was surprised. Like, so in a sit inside paddle, which is the cheapest, lightest, it was a 45 pound, 10 and a half foot The CK1 paddle. Adventure. No, the, but yes, that one, but a sit inside. So like an Old Town Vapor, my old oh, one. Yeah. Well, I was with almost no effort, considerably faster than Jeff's much larger, heavier Hobie 360. pedal, Hobie 360. Mm -hmm. But like I wasn't, the effort was not there. So like on a small lake, it, it glides, was a non-issue yeah. whatsoever, windy day or not. Yeah. And I have a lot of maneuverability. So maneuverability is the other one. Like Europe, even with a 360 drive, the mm -hmm. maneuverability on the paddle kayak is still higher. I can do a 180 yeah. faster than Jeff could in that 360 yeah. drive. So the maneuverability is very high. Also in river systems, you have an advantage. Close Definitely. quarters, river fishing, a paddle kayak has an advantage. When things bottom out, you're not SOL. You can just continue to paddle. Like your draft is much lower. So there, um, there are times we've been on the river mm -hmm. with, uh, say we had our, our buddy fish anything, yep. Ethan do better, out on a river section. We had our Hobies. He had his uh, PDL, Old Town PDL. 106. Yeah, and he just pulled up the drive, and yep. we, we could not continue because it was so low and the river was so strong. So he went beyond, and we were stuck. He just pulled up his drive, and he just paddled up, and he was like, yippee skippy, and like continued on. And we were screwed, and my feet got wet, and it was horrible. So, we were dragging our boats yeah. around. So, uh, so paddle kayaks yeah. also come with a much lower price yep. tag. So uh, a lot. That's why. And that's not why, but the way they're engineered, those crescent models, for example, for a 12 and a half foot, really nicely designed kayak, it's like one to three thousand dollars cheaper mm -hmm. than a competitive than a competing pedal. Yep. Now what. What are some of the things, well, and you get like the tranquility that a lot of people like of like not having things that are loud and clunky yep. and heavy and really impactful to like your environment. Less so things to break. If you just like to do a river float, you can't, mm -hmm. you can't beat a paddle. Now right. as a fisherman, which we're talking from a fishing context, there are some drawbacks. Uh, one, I can't go as far. I'm expending a lot of energy. My hands are always occupied and the, the paddle is this? always in the way. I don't I care if it's I on can't. the side or yeah. whatever, like it's in the way, whether it's fighting fish, messing with line, trying to do all six things at once and net the fish should do the thing and touch your thing and your phone and all that like it, it's my, one my more favorite thing is thing. getting dragged into a tree yeah because like i can't fight this fish and at the and same paddle time yourself well so you end up like doing the one hand paddle you put, you <laughs> prop it against your hip yes. and like do one of these do one of these like do one of these like. so that yeah. that's a problem um the other i mean the, it's that's really it though like other than, oh and pet like technically if your paddle breaks you're screwed Paddles are super nice. They're also kind of expensive, so it is an add-on. Mm -hmm. If you want a nice paddle, a couple hundred bucks, that'll set you back, so that, that doesn't feel great either. All that being said, what is a paddle kayak? A paddle kayak is phenomenal for someone who wants to maybe save some money. It's yep. a phenomenal opportunity for Entry someone who level. likes a, a little bit of tranquility mm -hmm. and is maybe just getting into fishing and can't afford a, a, a heavy setup. Someone who needs something that's lighter that they can get on top of a car rack. Ooh, a paddle is purpose, going yeah. to be so much better for you. Someone who's in it for the exercise. There's a lot of people who enjoy paddling because it's good for your heart rate and it's just good exercise so yep. there are a lot of places where a paddle kayak can win now that being said I still, especially for someone who's new, if you can afford it and you can get it into your truck or you have a way to transport it, I recommend a, pe a pedal kayak, yep. especially as you're first getting started. It takes away a lot of the consternation, stress, and like obstacles you have to overcome to yep. enjoy fishing. Especially since they've now some of them Most now of them come have, have come down in price and yeah. they're much more affordable. So you look at like the Old Town Sportsman lineup, mm -hmm. for example, uh, the 106 is 2,400 bucks. And it's stable as heck as all the other models. You just don't great have- Great in the river, great in big the water. It does a yeah. lot of things really well. It's really hard to argue against someone who wants to go that route. There are other pedal kayaks that are yeah. in that range in that neighborhood. Uh, the 106 is a little cheaper than a lot of those and it's very refined. So yeah. I really like recommending that, but like a bona fide setup, a lot of people love those kayaks. It, it's hard to go against that. If $3,000 is good know, for you, yeah. then like I, I do recommend that you go in that route because it opens up a lot of areas for you. Mm -hmm. uh, they You can bring a paddle with you and pull up your drive and still paddle if you need to. So you kind of get the best of both worlds, um, except the weight is a little bit, it can be a right. problem for some folks. Folks and the cost. There's still definitely a market for the paddles. And it's twofold, right? One is if you just want the peace, serene, tranquility, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you can just grab that. If you want to save money, like that, that's a great throw and go. It's a great throw and go option. Yeah, they are a bit lighter. The 106, though, like just to call it out, the Old Town 106 is only 110 pounds. <laughs> it's like 30, 20, 30 pounds one, differential. Zero seven. With like, the 
really solid floating yeah. drive. <laughs> it's not insanely heavier. If oh. you're loading in a truck, it's pretty easy. I get yeah. rooftop loading, especially if you have any mobility issues, shoulder it's, problems. It still can be done. It, c it can be done. It's just a little more difficult. And they do now make like some roof loaders, they rooftop do, yeah. loaders that do it for yeah, you essentially. Mm -hmm. So you, you can get away with it. That, that's one option. 100%. The other reason to get a paddle kayak though, and this is a, a, something that you could delay the build on mm -hmm. is you can just add a motor to it. So many paddle kayaks now are kind of being built with the intention of being a platform for something else, whether it's adding shallow anchors uh, mm -hmm. or like a power pole or motors or both, right? They've got all these extra potential bells and whistles that you can either take advantage of or not. So you can get like the bona fide RVR. You don't have to add the anchor system to it, but it's built to take the anchor system. Yeah. You can get the Sholey, same thing. It's like got it's, it's, it's everything set up to have ready a motor. to go. It's set up to have pretty much anything on they, it. Yeah. They now either have the ability to add a bracket platform. Mm -hmm. So Bonafide's a great example. Bonafide and Wilderness System. That's the, I think that's the best. It's so like the RVR. Those two. Yeah, the they're, Wilderness they're, Systems is the same. They've got a three pronged platform so you could do two shallow yes. anchors and a motor on the back of it yep it's or in insane. the front yeah and, and uh they're they're really hyper flexible yeah, so yeah and the and the light tackle two is the one i have a paddle cock that i anticipated only being paddle but i was like yeah maybe someday i might want to put a motor on it now because we're gonna move into and i think we should transition to talking about where motors live we're gonna yep. transition to a motorized setup because it's something that we want to learn about i've never had one i've only used one for a couple of minutes so it's not yep. like i have a lot of experience but i want to yeah. And I want to try it, and I want to take it on big water, like 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 Lake Saint Clair, and have a kayak be even excess even more water than it has for me in the past. Where motors live now is sort of where pe pedals were when they first came out. They're expensive, yep. they're heavy, uh, and they but they can do a lot for you. Yep. So when you get like, and I'm talking about a lot of different kinds of motors. So there's two different sorts of motors. There's yep. like rear propulsion, which is like big battery only does like one thing, which is like get you from point A to point B really, Fast. really well. Turns pretty darn well they and, and can work in the river and can work shallow yep. and they can be durable and all that, but they're expensive. It's like three, three, 3,000, 3,500 bucks yeah. for like between like the battery and a lot of other stuff. And it that's with like free. no mounting equipment. So three to $4,000 to get into like a nice rear mounted motor. They're also mm -hmm. heavy. They're extending the length and weight of your boat quite a bit. So you might even need to get a trailer yeah. instead of just like truck bed mounting. So they're like, Good and like, but still new and maybe not perfectly refined. Yep. Uh, the battery systems can be a little bit confusing and sometimes they're proprietary and sometimes they're limiting and there's risk. Like if you yeah. didn't charge a battery and you thought you did and you got, you, you got 16 miles out, if you don't have pedals, you are screwed. You can paddle your way back. You can just, paddle back, but like, good luck, fun. bro. I, have an, uh, I hope you brought some bars because like, if you're, 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 you're in a problem. Run. If you're yeah, on a river you're in run, trouble. it's going to be a nightmare. And so there are there yeah. are limitations, but. Um, as a kayak angler, I've never really like truly explored St. Clair. I've yeah. explored like the little bank areas and some little offshore, but I've never been like, hey, let's go check out Cove X because I've never been able to get there and back. I can't get there. I just yeah. can't do it. It's not feasible, yeah. even with a good quality pedal boat that can handle the wake and the waves and all that. Yeah. So if I've got a pedal kayak that I now put a motor on, like all of a sudden, like it, it truly is a whole other world. Um, and then same goes for spot lock. Like having spot yeah. lock or like something like that game is changer. a game changer for a it's ton insane. of people. And it should be like that's yeah. really cool like yeah. i think paddle cocks are a little bit on the upswing right now and i think they have a lot to offer and i don't hesitate as much off like recommending someone a paddle only uh situation i think they are the they're kind of on the upswing pedals i think they're right where we wanted them to be they're doing a really they're nice job the right they spot. have some more yeah. work to do to make them like maybe a little bit better a little more flexible uh break less be repairable that sort of thing but yeah. this is like refinement like they're good they're good and then motors are like the new pedals where they're new, they're really, really cool, yeah. they have a lot to offer, but I think we need to do some tinkering. We need to find ways to make them lighter, faster, more efficient, more reliable. Even though they are those things now, we like we, we can do they're better. better. And they're, yeah. they're on the mega upswing. So I, I still think, where do, are, should there be paddle kayaks? Yes. Absolutely, that is, infl that is just, yes, 100%. What would you recommend to somebody who's just getting into it? Mm -hmm. Most often I'm gonna say pedal if you can afford it. Yeah. Get the nicest paddle if you can't. That's what I'm still saying right now. I, I'm saying it, generally the same thing. It's pedal if you can afford it and you're gonna be happier. Mm -hmm. And if you have the intention of adding a motor at some point, it's easier to add them to paddle kayaks. You can totally add them to pedal kayaks. Yeah. 
If you want to steer with something beyond your rudder, you have to do some fancy schmancy stuff. Yeah. So it is kind of, the build is just a pain. Now, is that like a huge drawback? No, you oh. can totally add them to a pedal kayak and perhaps you should. And maybe that's better in some other people's opinion. In my opinion, I like it on a paddle platform. So if I'm, if I'm talking to somebody and they're mm -hmm. like, I'll ask them, do you want to add a motor at some point? You need to start thinking about it. Yeah. Like before it was like, well, I only need to think about like, do I, do I want pedals or not? It's like I a basement in a house. Like I can't add fish. a basement. Do I need the basement <laughs> yeah. or not? Do I need it or not? Yeah. And now it's like, now there's like a second story that you have to think yeah. about. Like, oh, you're going to buy this house. Well, it's only on one floor. Do you want to? Well, that take that into consideration because you might want to add it. It's and you now, don't, you don't you have can't... to do it right away. Yeah. You can do it later on. Yeah. So if somebody were to tell me at some point, I want to add a motor. I'm like, Hey, Generally, my recommendation would be like, look at a really solid paddle platform. And the cool thing about the industry too, is you look to Crescent, for example, there's a lot, a lot of thought that goes into their designs. So you're able to get just a teched out paddle kayak that you can easily add a, a mounting bracket to and then a motor on top of. And it's still, it's got the weight capacity, weight capacities are improving. Mm -hmm. And just the overall thought of the design is improving. Yeah with the intention of being able to add a motor, I'm like, dude, go that like all well, day. So hopefully this video is helpful for you. Yeah. Uh, if you're on the market for a kayak, maybe you're considering a paddle, but you're like, I see all these pedals and all these motors. Like, listen, we totally get it. The market is expanding. That's a good thing and it's a bad thing yeah. just because it makes it more confusing when you go out and to purchase one of these floatable you gotta vessels. You got to pick between like a Titan X all the way yeah. down to like, you know, a CK1 or something. Like so, there, there's so many options. Our new advice would be think ahead. Think ahead, think mm -hmm. ahead, think ahead. What do you want to eventually do with this? Imagine, you know. Or what you might. What you, what you might want to do later. Even if you're not sure that you want to, it's something you might want to do. That's why you got to think ahead. What terrain are you traversing most often on the boat? Where do you fish? How do you fish? Uh, you got to think about all these pros and cons. And we're going to do a lot more videos in this type of series here. So we got a lot to talk about with the kayak industry because there's all sorts of stuff going on. We're doing a lot of different build things that you guys are going to see this year, uh, 2024. So we're looking forward to that with you guys as well. And again, like I said, hopefully this helps you make a decision of some sort. Think ahead, plan ahead, and then make your decision based off of that. We'll do a lot more like pros and cons with different types of uh, kayaks that exist now. And I think we need to take a deep dive on the motors, right? Because there is just so much to talk about with that. I know for me personally, I'm always going to have a paddle kayak. It's always going to be there either for river and or for the ponds and the lakes that I fish. And one of them is probably going to have a motor on it. And I also might get rid of my 360, get a 180 drive Hobie Pro Angler, uh, which now has kick-up fins, by the way. They upgraded yeah, the 180 yeah. drive. So get that and then throw a motor on that bad boy. And that'll be my, my tank. Right, just the all-in yeah. vessel going yeah. out there. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you like stuff like this, be sure to like and subscribe because we'll be doing lots more vlog format things like this in the future. And we'll catch you on the next video. Okay, bye.